He once led the world body created to promote peace, security and cooperation. Now Kofi Annan is leading a task force to solve one of the most divisive issues in Myanmar. It wasn't long before he was forced to confront just how polarizing the issue is. Hundreds of mainly Buddhist nationalist protesters in the city of Sitwe vented their anger and disdain at a foreigner meddling in the controversy surrounding Rohingya Muslims. I just want a decision from our own people, from us. I don't want that kind of a decision made by outsiders. Myanmar is a country that has its own sovereignty, and as that kind of country, it's unacceptable that the commission's been formed with outsiders. Anan is trying to stop four years of fighting between majority Rakhine Buddhists and minority Rohingya Muslims. To build the future, the two major communities have to move beyond decades of mistrust and find ways to embrace shared values of justice, fairness and equity. It's not clear exactly how many people have died in the past four years of unrest. Estimates are between one and 300, with many more injured. About 125,000 Rohingya now live in desperate conditions in camps in Rakhine State. More than a million Rohingya throughout Myanmar have few legal rights. They cannot marry, move or work without permits. They're stateless, not considered nationals of any country. Most arrived in Myanmar from neighbouring countries, particularly Bangladesh, generations ago. Myanmar's government continues to treat them as foreigners. The United Nations describes them as one of the most persecuted peoples in the world. Long-term democracy campaigner Aung San Suu Kyi is now councillor, effectively the leader of the government. She's been criticised by rights groups for not addressing the plight of Rohingya Muslims. The decision to bring in Anan is infuriating many Buddhists, the very people he needs to win over if the Rohingya issue is to be resolved. Miriam Nahond, Al Jazeera.